Many people are more familiar with famous systems of tabletop role-playing games like Dungeons & Dragons or Pathfinder, 2nd edition. But many people don't know that actually Digimon has a tabletop of its own. No, this is not something official that Bandai has given us, but boy would that be nice. This is something that has been fan-made. It has now passed through three different creators and has been made by the community in order for us to enjoy and play together. So I figured today I would give you a brief introduction into all that this system has to offer and over the many years that it's been worked on, just what exactly it is. So just a brief overview for those of you who know what Digimon is but may not be quite so familiar with tabletop RPGs. These are games where you take on the role of a character and are thrown into a world created by the Game Master, which is one that controls everything else outside of your character. The world, the NPCs, non-player characters, that you will encounter throughout the way. They will help to mold a story alongside of you. It is largely a game of make-pretend, but with rules in order to help facilitate how that story happens. Your actions will largely be decided by dice rolls, whether in combat or outside. Whether you're just trying to open a door that's stuck or trying to strike an enemy with your pepper breath, these are rolls of the dice. And together, usually with a group of four or five players is usually a good size for a group, but you can play with whatever size you like. You work together to create story, defeat the enemy, and with the Digimon, typically, save worlds. So, with the rough estimate out of the way, let's look at what Digimon Digital Adventure has to offer that is what makes it a, its own very unique system for the very unique mechanics that Digimon has. So the first thing that is different from many systems that you'll be familiar with is you will actually play as two different characters. You will play as both the human tamer, but also as the partner Digimon. Each one of them has very different ways of how they are created in the beginning, and will play very different. Typically, your human will be much stronger outside of combat, when you are looking to do skills and moving, diplomacy, things like that, where your Digimon does the heavy lifting once you enter combat and are facing off against the giant Skull Greymon that's looming over you, ready to destroy you and everything in its path. I'll put a link down in the description below to an amazing character sheet that has been created for this. It is incredible what they have done with just the Excel program that makes it rather easy for you to create your human and Digimon as you go. Humans have five main stats that you'll have to consider when you want to decide what type of human you want to play. There is agility, which affects your ability to dodge, fight, and be stealthy. Body, which will affect your athletics, endurance, and feats of strength. Charisma, which will allow you to manipulate, perform, and persuade. Intelligence, which will affect your ability to use computers, survive, or use general knowledge. And willpower, which will allow you to see things, decipher people's intent, and bravery. These are all the different skills that are used in Digimon Digital Adventure, and will greatly affect what your character is best at. Now for those of you who understand tabletop RPGs, you know that you will not be the best at all of these. So you have to rely on your party in order to effectively get past obstacles that you yourself are not good at. This holds true for any system. Once you've decided on what type of character you want to play, you'll need to know what type of world you are creating this character in. There are three main levels that a human can be created in. There's the standard, enhanced, and extreme versions of a character. This will greatly affect the power of your humans. This you'll have to ask your game master about, and will determine the number of points that you can use in character creation. Once your character has been created, you'll want to create a brief backstory, give a little bit about them, just to know your character. But another major thing that the Digimon Digital Adventure has is aspects and torments. Aspects are things that your person is particularly good at. Say they are a charisma-based character that's good at performing, so say they are a cheerleader. So anything that's made as a performance, entertaining or distracting, might be one of their major aspects that they're very good at. So that might give them the plus four major aspect. Or something that they might be, you know, slightly better at, which is persuading people who are down. They, you know, had difficulties when they were trying to come up. So one of their minor aspects would be an ability to comfort. And the other thing are torments. Torments are things that we regret or things that bother a human which we all have 
It's just the way... It's just natural. And for those of you who have watched any of Digimon, you know that the growth of a character is core to the Digimon growing alongside them. That is what makes this series very interesting to me. So the same cheerleader might have a torment of possibly there's some there was some accident that happened um, when doing a pyramid or something, so they have a fear of heights because it was unsteady. Or if the ground shakes underneath them like the pyramid, you know, it could trigger a torment and make them scared and cause a check that possibly could make them withdraw into themselves. So those are the major things that humans can do. Obviously, there is much more that goes into all of this, but this is just a brief overview of what makes this system unique, possibly from others that you have played. Now, when you go looking at the Digimon, Digimon have a completely other stats than humans. They play very differently, because they are used primarily for an entirely different reason. The five main Digimon stats are Health, Accuracy, Damage, Dodge, and Armor. Now, most of those skills are fairly self-explanatory. Health is your overall health pool, and armor is how much damage you reduce from an incoming hit. Is the only real clarification there that you might need to basically understand. So, there are thousands of Digimon literally at this point. So how do you go about creating your own Digimon? Well, this is a very modular type system that allows you to create your Digimon the way you want. By using qualities. Qualities are like feats, abilities, that you might see in other games that you can pick. There are a huge variety of qualities to choose from, whether they are affecting your attacks, boosting your stats, making you deal more damage for being taking damage, so tanky, counterattacking, improving your derived stats, which will have a variety of effects, being defensive, moving faster, being stealthy, supporting. There's... There is a whole slew of qualities in this system. Some generally more often taken than others. But if you want to make a Digimon that specializes in stealth, like a Commandramon, that will become camouflaged with its with its active camo that it naturally has, you'll want to pick up some stealth options. Or if you want to play, play a Galmon who's a boxer that dodges and counterattacks, there's abilities for that as well if you are interested in trying them out. Then you get to attacks of a Digimon. Well, the, each Digimon, starting at the rookie level, which is typically what you would start at, has two attacks. You can create these attacks any way you want. They are the tags you can apply for free to affect an attack are melee and ranged, and damage and support. Support attacks do not do any damage, but they will be much better at applying effects. For if an attack has the damage tag, it must do at least two damage to apply said tag. So it requires you to make an attack ensure that the effect goes off if it only has a support tag. A Digimon at rookie level starts with 25 DP. Digital points, Digimon points, whatever you want to call it for their creation. And as you create their higher forms, each one of those forms will have more DP to use. Champions have 40, Ultimates have 55, Megas have 70, so on and so forth if you want to go past Mega. But that's starting to get into some interesting territory once you start getting into burst modes or ultras or whatever you wish to call them. I'm sure you'll give me many discussions in the comments down below of what actually things above Mega should be called. Hey Survivor, are they called Super Ultimates? Apparently. But that's neither here nor there. Each one of its forms is a completely new Digimon. You can make it however you want. So as you continue through the campaign, you will be gaining more experience for your human and more Digimon points for your Digimon. If you put a point into armor for your rookie form, it becomes a point in armor for your champion form as well. They carry over. A point in qualities of your rookie form will be a point in qualities for your champion form, though it can be different. So, bear that in mind as you create your Digimon. It's generally easier to make a Digimon that does the same role for a party, the same kind of things, throughout its lifespan. Whether you're in the Champion, Ultimate, or even Mega eras of your Digimon. So therein lies one of the biggest differences for Digimon Digital Adventure compared to most tabletops, is your Digimon, like the anime, will be changing between its rookie, champion, forms 
as it grows and learns how to unlock the champion forms, or if it gets beat up bad enough, will revert into the in-training form. So you will be digivolving along the way. There are a few other special actions that you can do that will help to liven up your combat a little more. Humans can support their partners in combat by bolstering their abilities to dodge or accuracy if you wish them to be able to hit more or just be able to survive and dodge more depending on what your Digimon does for the party, maybe which you want to do. On each of your turns, your human and your Digimon will both have two simple actions. So you have a total of four actions to play with, which is a lot if you have a lot of players. Which means battles in this system can take a little longer, especially if you're just getting started and learning what everything does. The other actions that you can do in combat to mix things up, especially for your Digimon, primarily is clashing. Clashing is like a grapple check. In which you are not attempting to damage your opponent, you're attempting to grapple and restrain them. Especially if they're flying, this can cause them to fall, which is, can be quite interesting. If you wish to make one action particularly strong, you can bolster said attack, giving it a plus two to its accuracy and damage in order to apply more damage, or to make the effect of the attack stronger if it has an effect on it. Another special action that is fairly unique to this system is the intercede action. When an ally is attacked by an enemy Digimon, you can use up to your movement speed to throw yourself in front of it and take the hit instead. This allows you to protect your squishier party members with tanks. So do note, when doing this intercede action, you lose one of your actions during your turn. So, if you, you can intercede twice in a turn, but you will then have no actions on your own turn if you do this. When you are in combat, the primary, the primary way of ending combat is doing damage. So how does exactly attacking and dodging work in this system? Whenever you roll an attack, you roll what is called an accuracy pool check. This system is entirely a d6 system. So, you roll a number of d6s equal to your accuracy stat, plus any additional modifiers or penalties that may apply due to qualities or attacking an enemy that's too far in range. We'll get more into the specifics of such in a more combat-oriented video. And a success in Digimon Digital Adventure is anything that is a 5 or a 6 on the 6-sided die. So you have a one-third chance for every die you roll of creating a success in general. Your accuracy pool will be rolled against the enemy's dodge pool. If you meet or exceed your opponent's dodge roll, you hit. And then you apply your damage, as according to your damage stat. Again, plus any concerning qualities or modifiers that may affect this. And then once you have completely figured out your damage total, you get a plus one for every time your accuracy is above the dodge. But if you rolled three accuracy and the opponent only rolled one dodge, you would do an additional two damage. This damage that's coming in is reduced by an enemy's armor. And then the final number is calculated as to how much damage they would take. Every time you are attacked in a round of Digimon Digital Adventure, your dodge pool is reduced by one. The dodging cannot always be relied upon, and it can be greatly effective if you pile onto one creature, lowering its dodge pool down. So this greatly encourages the teamwork of blasting down one target. But this can also be used for the monsters against you. So be aware. Whenever you are making any other general skill check, usually outside of battle, you will be using you'll be doing what's called a target number check, which is 3d6 plus whatever modifiers apply to that check. So if you're doing, for example, a feats of strength check, you would roll your ranks and feats of strength plus your ranks in body. And then the GM would set a target number. If you pass that target number, you succeed. If you succeed by five or more than the target number, it is considered a critical success. Or if you fail by five or more, it is considered to be a critical failure. And every single enemy that you encounter in this system is made exactly the same way. The only caveat to that is some of the more powerful enemies you encounter, there are boss qualities that are available to bosses that can make them far more dangerous than any other Digimon you might fight normally. And that's 
the general overview of Digimon Digital Adventure. There will be more videos going greater in depth into individual systems and qualities and everything that will everything that you need in order to create your better Digimon and understand. But this is the general overview of how the system works entirely. It is an impressive system. The manual has a staggering 237 pages. Well, you might think that's staggering to many people, but honestly, for rule books for tabletop RPGs, that's honestly about right. And it's continuing to grow. More features are being talked about. Another version is in the works. We are currently in version 1.4, but I am sure that someday we will get another version to keep moving on and growing, just like the Digimon and their partners do in the digital world. Thank you all for watching. I hope if you're interested, let me know. It's been quite an interesting adventure running a couple of campaigns now through this, and I think I've started to learn a bit about understanding how it works and what stories that I want to tell in the digital world, as I'm sure many of you do. Thank you for watching. I hope you enjoyed. Remember to like, comment, and subscribe if you want to see more from me. And as always, everyone, remember to be awesome. Until the next one, yeah. bye bye.